Pinot Black, folks. Old science to new science. And basically, this the star flopper triangulation. Okay, uh, Churchill knew about it. He'd always show the V sign. Well, it wasn't just for victory. It was for what the idea. We we got to get out there and find out what's up there in space. That's doing this V because my astronomers are telling me there's some crazy stuff up there. And yeah, there is. Uh, it's not just the tape when you go through and win the race. And yes, they'll turn around and say that it's athletes running and going through a tape, I'm sure, or something like that. I haven't heard the spiel yet, but the idea you will see the V's and triangulations and also these etches of these lines, okay? Uh, whether that be the spears or whatever, somebody's looking for a look or something like that. Basically, if something crazy was to happen, okay, and then you, know, you got to also remember it is 2012 that it initiates because it's 2012, okay, but the idea that they are looking at 2012 is the idea they know that this stuff's coming around. Uh, we've got uh, just here on the 15th of December of 2011, we've got Zenith that's going to be in a perfectly uh, dead on with the South Pole. So let me edit these photos. And what I mean with old science to new science is the idea that the astronomers used to see this and they drew our, uh, I'm not sure, you have to look up the name of her, but it's the uh, it's God uh, or whatever. Uh, and also, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure if it's, uh, I'm not going to even say the nationality that it basically is originates from. The idea that it is an astronomy view of the ages and ages ago, they would see what we see with the V's that we see up in by the sun and in outer space. When they'd see it with a telescope and they'd see the V. And then we get this that we're seeing now in modern day times, but we see the triangulations of the tetrahydrons and so forth out in space and also whatever they want to say for this but that's also the light beams that we see that go by the sun a lot and uh, I'll pull up my uh, website and I'll go to one of my photo pages and the idea that you will see the light beams that we're talking about that a lot of people catch that have been watching Soho for years so uh, all rights go to this should be in the Olympic medals and basically uh, I always donate to US Olympic team when when the Olympics come around whether it's winter or summer so the idea that also put the legal disclaimer at the end but the idea that I'm sure the Olympic Committee wants to sit, let these medals be seen anyway so you have some interesting tie-ins with astronomy whether they want to admit it or not okay and i.e. the pyramid base action that we see up there also is denoted by the box okay to not show a pyramid straight up on the metal but there you go there so the idea that it's all astronomy they've been looking at the stars for hundreds of thousands of years probably and they just we're never going to see the books of seeing it how far back we actually have been looking so probably lost stolen wars maybe still buried somewhere but then who's gonna there's gonna be a lot of people who would want to make a fake so we got what we got now our auroral view uh, that's our static going through space. The idea that North and the South Pole are always our static cling in space as we're going th through space. So the idea that you see how far off we are way, way off on the Antarctic. And the idea that I will show you the sun right now. We got that blown up to 400 and I'm going to show you some images and some photos that are very amazing that we've seen a big and then we did see this yesterday and remember this is more than likely flop this here shot of Lasco 2 they got it to you upside down okay to confuse you they don't want you to see or they just do it for just to test you I see, to see if you actually know anything about what's up there or if you've been looking for a long time so Karasov knows where oh yeah he's been looking for a long time yep Pino Black the prick yep we know about that guy so he's looking at there all the time nothing better to do and I want to thank the Brits again for some great pictures down there. And they, as you see here, it says that it faces north right there, northwards. Okay, and it's true because the sun comes up from over here, which would be east. But the idea that this, at that time, 101 in our object is our bright, shiny object. Again, the, at this UTC time, again, early there, the sun comes up behind the screen shack and goes all along the horizon when the sun comes up. This is our bright object down there. I have photos also from a ship. These are the pictures that will show you that the, that the sun 
it, this is not the sun. And you can see the time again in the pictures here, because basically these are off of the slides I had a long time ago. So at 101 UTC time, that's not the sun. That's our bright object coming up in the same, what I presume to be, northeast direction. Because later on in the day, the sun comes up from behind, from the southeast. Because we're in the winter solstice, and they're down in Antarctica, so it's going to come up showing it's going to be mostly southeast. The sun always comes up in the southeast. So there's your sun coming up. Just starts to break over around 4 or something. And at the three, that shot there a minute ago, that was our bright object going away. Okay. It comes up in the northeast, as you see there. And I think that's, that's correct. Yep, it's dark at 2. And then that comes up, UTC time. And then we move into it going away. And at 4.43 UTC, the sun starts coming up in this direction, coming back that way. So IE, two suns, folks. Because there's the sun coming up. And I go back to it and show you again the idea that the bright object at 2.43 going away, at 1.43 when it was coming up, at 043 when it was coming up, 2343 the evening, be just be, you know, just before midnight, it was coming up, and there is your proof that the idea that that's not the sun because it does not come up where we will show you right now that this is the sun coming up. That's the sun coming up at 543, and there's your sun. Earthquake maps are a little bit busier than what they've been for a while because they've been pretty calm for a long time. But as you can see, the calm comes from the idea that the South Pole has been kind of calm. But I, sh I showed you earlier on the aurora that the idea that we're way off down there. So is it starting to balance out where it wants to be for the maybe the, before the next turning of next year? Okay, since we're in the win winter solstice and Philippines, you had a lot of action there. So, and this was basically all at 106, you should see down on the clock, Central Standard Time, folks, is what you're looking at on the 13th here. 13th of December, 2011, folks. So, so to hammer it home, there we are. That's how far we are off on that. That's Antarctic, and that's your aurora on the South Pole off. Now, folks, I've seen it. Two different sites said that this was uh, NASA's solar historic observ observatory did this for this guy. Okay, the guy in Australia is the one that's supposed to have found it. I do believe there's also U.S. observers down there in Australia most all the time. We've always kind of known about There's been movies, I think, over the years of it, them down there sitting there watching with the satellites and so forth. So this is the image. But the thing is, is keep in mind, is, is this is moving across the so sky and they're going to say there's possibly going to graze the sun on the 15th. Check this out. What's moving along with it? What planet is that that's moving along with it there? That's what I'm very much interested in because we know that that's a planet somewhere up high. More than likely, since the band gets lower, it's probably be up higher here. There's a planet going along with it, or some object. Okay, so it's not just that comet there. And the idea in the past, I've seen the green footage, and we've seen the red dots that were humongous when Alanin, and the idea that, you no, know, Alanin didn't hit anything or anything like that, but when it comes by, we had a lot of earthquake, a lot of earthquake, and a lot of... So this is going to be coming by on the 15th. Let's take a look at uh, a lot of the uh, constellation maps and stuff like that. Okay, But the idea, like I'm saying, is what planet is that that's going along right there when they took the shot? Why didn't they say, well, here it is streaking by this planet or that planet? Okay, And also, look, we're going to show you some Mercury pictures real fast. So I guess a big shout out to Skull and Bones and Harvard University or whatever the heck, or maybe I've got that wrong and pissed them off. But anyway, this is Harvard, and they got a nice map for us to look at here on the Internet, educating sharing and educating folks so here we go zenith is going to be on the on the 15th of december is going to be dead on the south pole jupiter uranus neptune is going to be right behind it let's look at some other constellations stuff of today and what it's going to be moving and also the idea that this proves right here that's showing you that on the 15th that it's going to be dead on or or between the, now and the 13th and the 15th this is going to be dead on on the pole down there okay 
to prove I'm not blowing you, there you go. There is on the 15th. It should be there. Dead on in the South Pole. Now to save time, when you are looking at this, folks, I'll even knock it down to 150%. Is when you're looking at this, take in mind that you can eliminate all this stuff that at 1 a.m. that we know that it's something that's it's rising all the time. So more than likely, it's coming out of the northeast sky. So the idea is so humongous that more than likely it's got to either be backed by Jupiter and Uranus and Neptune, which is wrong because it's down here. And the idea that uh, we see it coming up in the northeast, okay, our bright object that's been doing it for all oh, way over more than two or three years now, okay, or at least the last year and a half that we know of have been able to see observations of it down there. Okay, so here's a local... Basically, North America right now, folks. So the idea, realize where your North Pole is. But at the same time, we are getting superheating because the idea that with this, sitting here showing you that, you'd be laying on the ground if you were in North America. Okay? Your east is to your left, and your right's to the west if you're laying on the ground with your head pointed north. Okay? So the idea that we're on the winter solstice, so the idea that we're tilted down, the earth going through space a little bit. Okay? Tilted like this. Is it the normal tilt when we stay that way? I don't know. We'll find out. Because here's Zenith right now currently. And as you can see, they'd like to have a nice big uh, eye on it. Okay? Because basically, that's going to be all the way down here directly on the South Pole on what we've showed you. Just back up the tape if you don't believe me. It's right on the maps. Okay? So that's going to keep moving dead straight down. And that's our new meridian, I guess, possibly, is what the zenith probably stays on all the time. I don't, I don't know a lot about zenith. But I can give you this much about it, and the idea that right now, currently, that's where it's at. And then it doesn't rise or set. It's in constellation Hercules, <coughs> and it never sets, <coughs> never rises. Zenith, folks. There you go. <coughs> never sets, never rises. And here we are again down at Nehemiah. And all <coughs> they have it playing backwards. So the idea that I will have to back up, I believe, to... No, what is it? Okay. All right, there we go. So this comes in earlier. As you can see the brightness at that early a.m. Watch the clock up here, right there. Okay. <coughs> okay, otherwise, that's the normally... 23 to 24 hours, they're still getting some light from the sun from the very, very back side. But here comes our bright object, okay? And bam, it drops right out of the sky. There it is, and it can be it found to hide and flop, and you don't see the bright, the blackness, and the camera ain't doing the BS that everybody says. Then it hides. Pretty much it almost gets covered up by the tower. And then you get that streak, too. Check that streak. We're getting more of these streak actions that we've seen before. And there it went through, and we got flop, flop. Now, my question on this, was there more than one? We're going back through the footage here, okay? So it came in. That goes, is it gone and gone, or is it go back and then flop back into us? Now, more than likely, it goes back in and flops back into us. So when the unique thing is, is the idea, is this thing going to hit the ground? Eventually down there, because let me show you this shot. And real close, real fast. This was a clear day not too long ago. I kind of go fast and it blurs, but it did get got, got blocked out by the conning tile, and then you got the blue and red that gets projected down. So that one moves off, but the, let me show you the what I was wanting to most dramatically, and this is the most dramatic, folks. At 6:28 or 620 UTC time down there that shaped around the edge of the building folks and it was part of that okay it was part of that and as you've seen in the footage earlier go back and play the tape of just today's video how it flops in and flops back out is it some kind of radar Watch my, that was my title on my last one, folks, and it's kind of making somewhat some sort of a sense because the idea of the most dramatic thing of all is that right there. It actually bounces off of it like if it was radar, like if it was finding an airplane or an object that the military like would find. But that's not military. This is a star. 
okay? That comes in. Mercury Sun, Sprite Objects.